Hey loves, before we dive in to today's episode, I want to remind you to sign up for my next free workshop, Freedom to Rise. This is going to be a four-part workshop series at the end of March, starting on the 27th, and I'm going to be going live for four days. You will have access to the replay as well if you can't make it live. This series is for you if you are ready to rise into the woman you're here to be and step into your next level of yourself, your belief, your identity, so that you can manifest the life beyond your wildest dreams in the next six to 12 months and beyond. You're going to learn the number one thing you need to harness within yourself in order to manifest and the beauty of it is you already have it, we're just going to unlock it and strengthen it even more. You're going to learn the key places to start to become your own wisest healer and why your healing journey and healing and releasing what is holding you back is also another key place to focus on because we need to clear that shit out so that you can create the life you want so that you can move forward because right now you probably feel stuck. Maybe you're self-sabotaging, procrastinating, or just not feeling like your life and the momentum that you're gaining with your goals is like 100% turning you on, lighting you up, like stoking that fire within you, that passion, that drive, that intuitive pull forward that's like a full body fuck yes. That's what I want your life to feel like and if you're ready for that and so much more for free please join us in this week freedom to rise the link is in the show notes or you can head straight to kathorrocks.com forward slash workshop you literally have nothing to lose and your dream life a next level self to gain i always say it's a flex for me that my paying clients sign up for my free workshops because they are that valuable. You know, there's no fluff. It's not a week long sales pitch. Like we are packing value, inspiration, mindset shifts, actionable takeaways, journal prompts, and so much more into this week. So get your cute bot signed up for free at the link in my show notes now. Welcome back to the Put Yourself First podcast, ladies. Today, I am getting personal with you, sharing a personal story. I feel like I've been talking a lot into education, really um, sharing the behind the scenes of the deeper work that I do in terms of manifestation, spirituality, energy, healing, We've spoken a lot so far on that new series and I hope you've been loving it. I wanted to steer to the left today and share a more personal, raw example of my own journey with feminine energy specifically. So next episode, I'm going to be talking about using feminine energy to manifest manifest your dream life, manifest like change in every single area of your life and why feminine energy is so important for healing, for spiritual growth, for manifestation. And before I did that, I wanted to come from a personal perspective too and just be honest with you. You know, I've not always been someone who would describe herself as a relaxed, um, feminine woman. And I don't mean that in the, we're not like being stereotypical here in that I'm saying like, oh, I was a, I was a tomboy or I was this or I was that. Cause I'm going to get into, I might touch on it a little bit today, but I'll get deeper into why this is not just about, it's not gender it's not even like necessarily a gendered conversation because we all hold both masculine and feminine energy as we feel more confident to be ourselves in the world we can really come home to the core 
essence, like the core aspect of our energy. And of course, for the women listening to this podcast, that is feminine energy. That doesn't mean that as women, we don't have masculine energy because we absolutely do. But what I often see with clients and I'm going to share with my personal story today, women are often very much um, shamed for their feminine energy, the feminine aspects of themselves and actually praised and pedestaled for the masculine energy that they hold. And so we end up in this dynamic and I've been there where it feels better to really like overcharge and over express our masculine energy and almost like downplay, dilute or actively suppress our feminine energy. And the one blaring, blaring, glaring example of this in the world is our period. Think about for the majority of women and I think with the you know with the younger generations now this is becoming less and less thank god with a capital g I know that for me growing up periods were very much a taboo and it was basically like you want to be in the world as if you don't have a period as if it doesn't exist no one should ever hear about your period, think about your period and god forbid like if you have an accident at school right and you like bleed through your pants or your skirt, god forbid that someone sees evidence of your period, like that's the most shameful disgusting thing. I know that that was very much the conversation in my school for example growing up and even though it wasn't at home, luckily like my mum really actively wanted to flip that on its head and she was always very open with me so in my home environment with my parents with my family I wasn't I didn't feel that way but certainly like out in the world in society that was one example of one like and when you think about it one of the most important aspects of my my womanhood like my feminine energy as a woman my cycle is something that is so sacred to my life to my health to everything and yet the message that I got out in the world growing up is that it was something shameful it was something disgusting it was something to be hidden And that's just one example in learning growing up that it's actually easier to hide that. It's actually easier to shame that and to suppress it. It's actually easier to not be fully expressed as a woman and be out in the world with like your full feminine energy like heart on your sleeve out on the line it's actually easier to push that down and to over exert other traits that you have and when we think about the structure of our society in terms of that yin and yang energy and I'll talk more about this next episode but the yin energy is like the the receiving, the feminine, the openness, the flow. The yang energy is the masculine and is the is the doing energy, is the driving force energy moving forward. And think about how, like, I know that when I was growing up, I got pretty good grades for most of my school time. And I was really really praised for having that masculine energy that drive within me to do to to move forward to have purpose to achieve 
and that paired with obviously the the shaming and the suppression of other aspects you can see how for many women we grow up with this like almost confusion I was very like academic studious basically like that goody (laughs) two-shoes um I hated getting in trouble I always wanted to be the good girl like I always wanted to be doing well doing good moving forward getting good grades um you know being being praised and in that very strict dynamic of you go to school you get good grades you get into a good university you get a good job you work hard you earn a lot of money you are successful you deserve success because you've spent 10 years plus like with your head down at a desk and now you are good enough here you go here's a gold star like in the form of a fancy corporate job or whatever it may be that was very much like the path that was laid for me growing up and I've always had like I said a lot of a lot of masculine energy the way I'm built like my blueprint if you will is work is ambition is drive I'm a Capricorn, I'm a manifesting generator in human design. I've always just had this fire within me that's like, can just go. I can just, I can just be go, go, go. Especially when I'm determined and I've decided something. Like if I'm deciding something is going to happen, I'm going to make it fucking happen no matter what. Um call it stubborn, call it driven, call it ambitious, call it all three, whatever. And so that served me really well. It really served me. It served me in school. It served me when I started my businesses. So for those of you who are new, I've got a podcast about my journey with my first business into coaching. But growing a business, starting a business, running a business, especially having not come from that background. Like I said, you know, it was very much encouraged for me to be academic, to go to university, to get a nine to five. And so coming coming into entrepreneurship, um, having zero experience in business and no one around me who could like mentor me in that sense, I had to fucking work and when I say work I don't just mean actually work like going to clients houses and running my business I mean personal development mindset learning like what what the fuck is you know business marketing how do I how do I reach people on Facebook like because obviously it was a local business so I had to learn the ins and outs of social media the mindset of showing up every day seeing no results but still having to show up still putting myself out there networking there's a lot of energy behind that that is like doing that is that young driving force energy and I think without that I don't know whether I'd be where I am today because we do need both. We do need that masculine energy within us to move us forward. Where it really um, got out of balance for me is because I'd been very much praised for how hard I worked and how, um, you know, how like much I could apply myself to something. For me, it was like, the story I told myself around success was when I'm doing well I'm okay like when I'm doing well I'm a good person and that sounds so fucked up when you think about it like to pin who you are onto 
your role in your job or I don't know like how many sales you've made that month or whatever it is your career to pin your identity and your self-worth onto that is wild when that's just one aspect of your life and you're a human being but this is where it gets out of balance because because I had such a very much overactive um yang and like masculine energy within me I was on a hamster wheel I was on a train track moving forward driving 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 running 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 go 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 and there was no counterbalance counterweight to bring me back down to earth so how that played out in my work I've always been someone who has to be really conscious of things like um my health and well-being my health is something that I've only really honored fully like fully I would say in the past two years because before that it was very much like a binge restrict cycle because I if I was busy with work if I was working hard if I was focusing on something my health would go out the window like I would not leave the house for days because I'd be at my desk working or I would go weeks and weeks or even months without going to the gym because I told myself I just need to get through this busy period and then I can rest then I can relax and how many of you who resonate with I guess having um, a lot of masculine energy too how many of you can resonate with telling yourself that lie <laughs> again and again I just need to get through this week I just need to get through this week and then things will calm down and then I can put myself first and then I can rest and then I can relax and it just never really transpired like that so I would end up in like this binge restrict cycle with exercise food where it would be either like super restrictive and perfect and I'd be applying that do 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 like perfect perfectionism energy into going to the gym or what I was eating or whatever but then it would flip and it would be like I was so stressed out with work that I turned to emotional eating and of course with my you know body image and then also because I was stressed and working too much, my cycle, my hormonal fluctuations, which can cause me certainly things like mood swings, um, low libido, um, really painful periods, just the knock-on effect that stress has on your body as a woman, like it really, it really fucking sucks it really sucks and something I was also really battling with I would say in my first business especially was taking life so seriously and never having fun (laughs) like never really letting my hair down and just let myself live my life because I told myself that I needed to work hard and it was like this is your goal it's happened and you've just got to get on with it there was almost like no room for anything else and again looking back now it's like there was some of that that was really useful that kind of grit and determination especially in the first I think like three to five years of your business and if you're not balancing that with your feminine energy then good luck because I was burning out my mood was up and down all over the place my cycle all over the place and I think during those years like I really neglected myself 
I really neglected myself. And I'm sure some of you can resonate with that. So that really played a big part in my in my first business. And then when I came into coaching, it still was very much at play. And I guess this is where the transition of going from like operating from pure masculine energy to that balance of both really came in handy with how my coaching actually ended up evolving. Because if any of you have been around since the very beginning, this podcast has been going for like five years now or something crazy like that. I, when I started coaching, was very much in the masculine energy of personal development. And I'm talking like that Tony Robbins vibe that I still use to this day. You know, Tony Robbins championed NLP, for example, which is such a big aspect of mindset work. It's like one of the foundational elements of my coaching certification from Yes Supply is is based in NLP you know, is based in neuro-linguistic programming. And when we think about mindset work and goal setting and um, motivation and accountability and strategy and like all these things that help us move forward, you can feel that doing energy, can't you? You can feel that driving force. And so I was fully in that world when I started coaching and was in that, still still very much on that hamster wheel vibe of just move forward. And there's a real power in that energy. And I think it can be hugely beneficial. And what I found is as my personal feminine energy evolved, as I activated and like ignited that within myself more and more, the more I was able to be more balanced in my approach, where not only was I working on someone with their mindset or with their goals, but I was also honoring working with them on their energy, on their emotions, on their healing, on their spiritual journey and all of that deeper under the surface work that it's like within the space of six to 12 months my whole like body of work if you will completely transformed along with my clients results because I was going from focusing purely on that almost like my motivational mindset yes go for it you can do it set your goals make your plan take action work hard energy and I was still honoring that and I was still using that but I was also in this other energy and this other balance of honor your emotions express your emotions feel your feelings (laughs) Be in the world, rest, receive, take a step back. Don't take everything so fucking seriously. And it was when I could get there with my clients that I realised like, this is really, like we're really hitting on something here. But before I really did that, I had to go on the journey myself because I'm never going to make you do something in a session I'm never going to take you through a technique. I'm never going to work on something with you that I've not really, really studied in depth and actively practiced for myself. So lockdown for me, I guess, was the year of my feminine awakening. And of course, lockdown, what a cliche that I found myself, I discovered myself, I worked on myself over lockdown, but who fucking didn't, right? So for me, it was really, it was really like a curiosity 
that got me into feminine energy work. You know when, and at this time as well, you've got to remember my spiritual journey was progressing quite heavily too. And I was in a place where I was really um, practicing spirituality. So I was meditating a lot more. I was journaling. I think I got my first like angel card decks and all of that kind of stuff. I was manifesting things that I wanted to manifest into my life. Getting crystals, like all of that. And you know when something piques your curiosity and like you've just got to follow it. What I will say is that something I've always had and a part of my feminine energy I've always honoured is my intuition. Because sometimes in life I've made decisions where something does not make logical sense in the slightest and yet I've gone for it anyway. (laughs) I've gone for it anyway. Even when other people are like, what are you doing? This doesn't make sense. That is feminine energy it's listening to your intuition, your gut instinct, that pull that you have towards something, even if on paper it doesn't seem right, or it's like the this option could make total sense, but for whatever reason, you just get a feeling that it's a no, but you just get this feeling that this is a yes, that's feminine energy, that's intuition, so luckily you know I've always had that I'd always harness that and I think that was a real teammate to all of that hard work that I was putting in but I was noticing that some of the mentors that I was looking to and working with just had a different energy about them they moved slower, they spoke slower, they were like magnetic and this isn't something you can consciously explain, maybe some of you have felt this with me and my podcast or my Instagram or wherever you found me initially, there's just something that you can't quite explain logically but you just feel drawn to that person. And that is a woman in her feminine energy, in her magnetism, in with her feminine fully activated. Because the feminine is like a lighthouse. It's like she calling forward the things to her, guiding them forward. Not out there forcing upon them, not doing, not going at it, not going after it, making it happen, calling it forward. And I'm going to talk about why that's so important for manifestation specifically in the next episode. But I was noticing these women were just like, there was something about them that I was drawn to. And not only were they deeply in their spiritual um, practice but they also just were more grounded they were in their body they I could tell when they were speaking that they were more present and I hadn't fully felt that up until that point because when I was speaking I was reading off my notes or I was thinking strategically I was thinking about what I should say there was you know I wasn't in my body like what what is coming through me like what feels right to say in this moment and that applies to business but also in relationships also in any decision you make in life it's like are you overthinking it are you constantly analyzing it or are you just trusting yourself are you trusting your intuition are you allowing your body your your like soul your heart to guide you forward with her desire with her 
with that like fire in your womb, that like fire in your heart. And so I was really drawn to it. And especially when these women were talking a lot about not just spirituality and manifestation, but also body image, confidence, sex, relationships, you know, all the things that I was like, yeah, like, I'm feeling okay in this area, but I know I'm not fully present. I know there's parts of me that are critical still, or are overanalyzing it, overthinking it. And when these women were talking about, like, I remember when I started working with one of my previous mentors who's now a a lovely friend Amy Rushworth highly recommend for this work as well she would talk about like crystal sex toys on her Instagram and I'd be like oh my god like it was like I, I was so curious that I just fell down the rabbit hole so this is the part as well where not only is the feminine work activating me in myself and my spirituality, in my, like, how I see myself, I think it goes on to really impact my own sexuality, my own um, relationship with my body, but also with my, therefore, as a result with my partner, and then it had this knock-on effect on my business and it was like knocking over dominoes if you think of dominoes laid out it's like one area you you work on one area and it has this positive ripple effect this knock-on effect on all the others so I started just tapping into these workshops and this coaching and this work really from this curiosity just for myself, just for my own spiritual and personal growth. And then pairing it with manifestation, which is coming in the next episode, and really feeling the difference in my energy day to day from slowing down, from honouring my feminine energy, from almost like reclaiming these parts of myself my sexuality, my sassiness, my desires, my boldness, the parts that I'd shut off, I'd diluted, I'd turned down, I'd suppressed because I wasn't praised for them, because I was sometimes actively shamed for them. So it felt like this awakening, that feminine awakening. She was like, she'd been asleep for so long and the masculine energy within me was just running the show and it was lit it was literally like finding myself again and some people might hear that and roll their eyes some people might hear that and not get it and that's okay because I know the people who get that get that when you've had an experience in your life or when you've gone through a journey let's say working with a coach or a healer or whatever and you just know you're a different person on the other side of that, like something on a cellular level has changed. That's what I found when I started doing feminine energy work. It was like I was remembering who I was. And luckily, because we were in lockdown, I had all the time in the world. (laughs) Um, So during that time, it was a real, it was a real awakening and also like playtime. I really played a lot that year because I was still working, I was still running my business and actually there's no coincidence in the fact that, you know, 2020 was a thriving year for a lot of business owners, especially online business owners working virtually with people and I don't doubt that my energy during that time came from doing this work on myself, came from dancing my fucking arse off to music every day, came from 
you know, having more time in nature, taking more baths, self-pleasure, like coming back to my body, being present, enjoying myself, laughing with my partner, like just letting go of this serious, like rigid armour that I'd had up around me. It was like a weight had been lifted, like a relief and I don't doubt that that's why my business started to take off because yes it was a right place right time for online business owners but also it was my energy that was leading me that was leading my actions and so I'm deep in the work I'm you know really investing heavily in this area I'm really continuing to do the work of remembering who I am and there's part of this as well that is also honoring the pain honoring the trauma honoring the healing that needs to happen as to why the uh, those aspects of me had been shamed and suppressed I remember a big part of a really deep healing weekend that I had with my friend Ashley who I still work with to this day, three, whatever, three, four years later, a big part of that weekend, I had to heal my relationship with men, with the masculine, because me showing up in that driving force energy was actually a protective mechanism to stay in control and to not step back and ask for help and receive because it was easier to do it myself, it was easier to be this island, it was easier to be this independent woman and so even though that was coming from a trauma response, that was praised to the heavens for my whole life. Cat's so organised, cat's so on it, cat can do anything, cat, you know, cat's always smashing it, cat's always busy, cat's always working hard and so you can see how I got to this point and I was like ooh like that is still going to be a part of me and it always will be but it doesn't need to be this driving force that is actually hindering my health hindering my well-being burning me out keeping me from the magic that lies on the other side of just showing up and having fun and living my life and what that then did for not just my business but my relationship like I said my set my sexuality like my relationship with my body feeling feeling turned on by myself (laughs) feeling so confident and what's funny and I know this will resonate with a lot of women listening who've gone through say gone through their 20s with that typical like overeating restrict cycle or yo-yo dieting or a rocky relationship with health and their body and all of that I am now pretty much like the, the I think I'm the heaviest I've ever been I'm definitely around there and yet I feel like the sexiest I've ever felt the most confident I've ever felt the the most love I've ever felt the most gratitude I've ever felt towards my body and it's because of this work and of course the the impact that has had on my relationship on how I feel like in the bedroom it's just on another level on another level um another part of part of this that really changed for me is my social life and my my sisters my sisterhood and of course that's such a big aspect of my work and again it's like there's no there's no zero coincidences I started the sisterhood in June of 2020 which is my membership community for women and that community is still running to this day there are girls in there to this day 
who joined when it opened. And if that isn't building my business on the basis of honouring the feminine, honouring women, honouring the magic that is feminine energy, then I don't know what is. But that translated into my personal life too because I had spent many years before this really cultivating some really strong relationships, some really strong friendships. But learning to be present and learning to really be vulnerable, be open and like just fucking go there really helped me draw closer, even closer, even deeper in intimacy with my with my friendships. And you know, and I know the word intimacy can be correlated with just sex and physical intimacy, but emotional intimacy is so important especially with feminine energy because it's that feeling of being fully seen and fully heard and doing this work has definitely taken that aspect of my friendships to the next level because when I'm with a friend, a sister, I, I'm i with her, like I see her before I might have been like, oh well, I'm having fun this weekend and seeing and hanging out with someone but I've actually got loads of work to do tomorrow and I'm it's almost like I'm sacrificing I like I'm taking time away from being productive by being by hanging out with a friend now I can literally just take off on a Thursday for no reason other than I want to to sit and drink tea with my friend all day Sam if you're listening to this shout out babe and that's that's that feminine energy. It's like life is for fucking living. Life is for being. You're not a human doing, you're a human being. And that has shifted my friendships, my personal well-being, my sex life, my relationship, my business and the money I make my whole, like, my whole relationship with myself has changed from coming back home to who I am, to who I am, not what I think I should be in the world, not what is the easiest thing to do to get praise or to get more success or to get more shit done, (laughs) but who I actually am which is a feminine woman, a soft, like, sensual, sassy, bold, brave, intuitive, psychic, grounded, loving, caring, feminine woman. And that you couldn't pay me any amount of money to go back to how I felt before. Stuck in that burnout, stuck in that shit, stuck in never asking for help in my relationship, like being a control freak or closing myself off emotionally and not opening up or being a people pleaser with other, with other people, with other areas overgiving, overdoing, overworking. You could not pay me to go back to that. (laughs) You really couldn't. So that is my journey with feminine energy, my story of really remembering, activating and igniting my feminine energy and also healing, healing, allowing myself to heal the aspects of myself that I shamed, allowing myself to heal my relationship with masculine energy so that I can feel safe to not always be in that driver's seat that I can lean back and receive. So if this resonates with you at all, I would really appreciate you reaching out. You can either email me at support at 
you can DM me on Instagram or if you listen on Spotify, you can reply to this episode with your thoughts and it will come directly to me as well. If you do resonate, please stay tuned for the next episode because I'm going to be going into the ins and outs of using your feminine energy and there's going to be some insight in there if you're wanting to start this journey or if you want to if you've already started it and you want to learn more you want to go deeper what I've heard as well is clients saying I didn't fully get this until you explained it so I will say that if you if you know about feminine masculine energy and yang energy but you're not embodying it you're not living it you're not practicing it you're not getting the results from it please stay tuned for that next episode because I think it's going to be really um impactful for you because I know it was for me clearly from what I'm saying so reminding you here at the end to make sure you're signed up for my free workshop freedom to rise it's a four-part workshop series happening at the end of march the 27th is when we begin replays will be available so even if for whatever reason you're busy that week work schedule doesn't add up whatever sign up you'll get the replays and it's going to be a jam-packed week full of inspiration mindset shifts energetic shifts takeaways like mind blown emoji moments so look forward to that if you're already signed up if you are make sure you check your welcome email because there's a graphic that you can download in there and if you share that graphic to your story and tag me you'll be entered to win some of the amazing prizes that we're going to have available for the workshop series and there'll be multiple ways to enter but the first and most important way to enter is to just share that graphic on your story and tag me so that I can celebrate you for signing up and others can see and join too because the more the merrier with helping women do this important work so that they can be all that they are so that they can become who they're supposed to be they can also remember who the fuck they are and manifest their dream life every woman deserves that you your pals your work friends your mom your sister your girlfriends whoever everyone deserves that so please share please spread the word you may even want to send this full episode to one of your sisters one of your girlfriends and I really appreciate you for tuning in hearing my story I know it's been a longer one today than normal but I hope it touched who it's supposed to touch and I will see you very soon have a beautiful rest of your day